Well, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 70 of McCray Live. And it is my, I don't do, I don't usually do these shows on Mondays. It is Monday, June the 22nd, 2020, 202 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, today is a very special show because I have the one and only Sandy Johnson and her agent, Rick Hendricks, on the program. Sandy Johnson, of course, played the original Judith Myers in John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. But for many, many years, we didn't know what happened to her. What happened to Sandy Johnson? What happened to the original Judith Myers, the OG? Well, her agent, Rick Hendricks, is here to tell the story, and it's a McRae Live exclusive. He's never told this before. This information has never been out there in the pop culture consciousness before until today, Monday, June the 22nd, 2020, 2.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. You know them, you love them. If you don't love them, you will now. Uh, Rick Hendricks and Sandy Johnson, how are you guys doing? Great, McCray. Good to see you. We're doing great. <laughs> it's so wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for being here. Thank you for rescheduling uh, because of technical difficulties last week. I'm so glad that we were finally able to, um, yeah, hook up and, and, and get this ball rolling. And uh, I want to start, before we go over to Sandy... Uh, because Sandy, I do want to find out about, you know, a lot of things, which I'm sure you've been asked 5,721 times before, but, uh, there are certain things that I definitely want to ask you, but Rick, let's start with you. Sure. Uh, you are a personal appearances agent and you run a company and, you know, Sandy of course is the OG Judith Myers <laughs> who had been incognito or MIA, I guess I should say for many, many, many years. And yeah. a lot of Halloween fans around the world wanted to know, especially when the convention sort of, you know, conventions have been there for a very long time as we know, but certainly over the last 10, 12 years or so, they've become a real big part of fandom in terms of pop culture, not just comic books, but pop culture and movies and all that kind of stuff. And when Halloween, whether it was the 25th anniversary or the 30th anniversary or the 35th anniversary, there was a noticeable absent character. And that of course was the OG Judith Myers. You have a story on how you were able to track down Sandy Johnson after all these years and have her first appearance, her very first convention appearance at the 40th anniversary convention in Pasadena in October of 2018. Rick, tell me this story. Tell the fans and the world this story. How did you find her? It's a good, it's a good one. Uh, and and to, if we do this Quentin Tarantino style and we start at the end and go back to the beginning, um, you know, Sandy wasn't, missing she was there the entire time it just, oh it just, took, it just took someone to find her interesting right, her. uh so, fascinating you know, okay it, it's funny i started out in the convention world really like back in 2008 where i was working for a company and we were doing sports autographs and um i we represented a, a an actor named ben davidson who was in Conan the barbarian Right. And um, he wanted to do, a, a, you know, a celebrity show because he had been in Conan. So uh, so I was able to find uh, the Chiller Theater Expo in Parsippany, New Jersey, which seems like it's been happening for like 40 years. Um, and we put him there and it was a great time and, and it was good. So I, we started doing more and more celebrity stuff because back around 2010, you know, was really starting to get popular, these celebrity conventions. More right. and more mainstream people were coming to them. That's it. Um, so somewhere, I, 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 I can't remember exactly who it was with, but somewhere around 2012, and I wanted to check my memory. I went back and looked at some old text messages and emails. Someone had mentioned Sandy Johnson's name. And um, I was like, oh, that's uh, Judith Myers from Halloween. Well, how come she doesn't do conventions? And then everyone just started talking like, well, no one knows where she is. She's in a convent someplace. She ran, <laughs> she ran away to Portland, Oregon and lives there in the woods. I mean, where did she <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and at that time, uh, I had just tracked down the Shining twins, uh, Lisa and Louise Burns from The Shining, the 
the two creepy twins from down the hallway. So I'm like, well, I got this. I could, I could, I could find Sandy Johnson easy if I could track down the Shining twins, you know, living in rural London someplace. I could find her. Sure, sure, that was exactly. In 2012, 2013, nothing. 2014, nothing. 2015, nothing. nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Couldn't find her, and I had it was a great. Time. I had a whole nope. emails. Just of right. stuff. I'm like, okay, and, wait. And at that time, I know what her birthday is. <laughs> I know she had a way to born in San Oregon. Antonio, Texas, kind of somewhere around stuff. there. I'm like, right. I know wait. all these little pieces of information, but I can't find the piece of information. Right. Right. So, you know, I, I would I, I would give up for like six months, and then I would pick up the notebook. It's okay. Let me let me go on the Sandy Johnson search again, and right. I would come up empty. And it just went on like that until like summer of 2008 and um, Bloody Disgusting had released an article where they were looking for Sandy. Right. And I remember seeing that article. I'm like, oh man, I don't want some fan to track her down. And then it's some fan that did it. I put all this work in and, and, and don't get me wrong. I wasn't the only agent that was looking. Of course, I mean, there were other, there were other people that were looking. There were promoters that were trying to find her. There were other oh, yeah. agents that were trying to find her. I mean, everyone was. I mean, there were whole Facebook pages dedicated, saying that were called "Where is Sandy Johnson?" Oh yeah. So one <laughs> one like Monday night, one like Monday night, like about an hour before dinner was ready at my house, I said, "Okay, let me let me get back into this." And I start looking. Now, what year is this on, again? What's that? What year is this again? This was uh, uh, summer of 2018. Summer of 2018. 18. Okay. So this is now six years into, into the search. Right. Right. I just like, okay, let me start looking again because I don't really want to see a fan for some reason find me, right? Because, um, I, you know, you put in all of that work. Now, were you, were you feeling the pressure because you knew that the new movie was coming out? It was the 40th anniversary. You were thinking to yourself, you know... I re- it got to be great to nail this down now. No, no, I, I always had felt this pressure about it because anytime you invest that amount of time into doing something, you want to be the person that accomplishes it. Right. Um, you know, and also from a convention standpoint, there's people uh, in the convention world that are sort of, I joke with Sandy, I was like, you're a unicorn. <laughs> I was like, you're, you're like, well, you're like, you're like one of the the, the convention unicorns. I That's like, it. There's a thousand movie posters out there that need your signature on them. You don't understand. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, you're like, you know, and and, the, and the these convention. unicorns don't always have to be like these massive stars, like Kurt Russell or Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, of course they're, not. They're people from films that have the biggest following and that people love the most. Um, you know, it could be any anywhere from you know. Finding, uh, uh, I can't, Mark Holton from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I know he was recently tracked down and someone brought right. him to a convention. Uh, again, to the Shining Twins, uh, you know, who, when I first called them on the phone, they're like, nobody cares about having our autograph. And now, you know, we go to these right, shows and right. they're a massive hit. The Shining is huge. Yep. So there wasn't really pressure because of the 40th anniversary in the movie. Sure. Although I, I believe that Sean Clark actually told me that the reason that Bloody Disgusting put that article out was because they were trying to find Sandy so they could get her to sign off of her um, her clips being used in the new film. Right. So that was ultimately why they why they actually put that out and why they did it. But that wasn't why. I mean, I was just continuing the search and, and it kind of just sparked a little thing under me. Okay, let, let me try and get this done now. Right. Um, so again, so so about an hour before dinner, I'm at my computer and I, I, again, there were things that I knew were true about Sandy. I knew her birth date and I knew that she was born in the San Antonio area. And I was pretty sure that her last name was Johnson, but here's the clincher. I was literally like, not, and I'm not going to reveal this, Sandy, don't worry, but I was really like <laughs> 99% positive that her first name was Sandy or Sandra. Right. Right. So I, I knew what I was looking for. Uh, so I found some website that actually gave birth records by county in Texas. And I looked up that birthday and I found three women named Johnson. Hmm. 
Now, none of them I looked up that had the first name Sandy or and Sandy. I found none three. Of them. So I'm like, oh, I struck out again. And my wife comes in the room and she's like, uh, you know, dinner time. I was like, I, I can't right now. I'm trying to find Sandy Johnson. And she's like, again? She's like, her first name's probably not even Sandy. I'm like, listen, do me a favor. Get out of the room right now. Right? This is what I, I do. This it's probably me. Carol not, or something. Not you. <laughs> right, right. This is what I do. I was like, what do you mean your first name? Like, of course it's Sandy. Right. right. So she walks out of the room. I like, look, I get back on my computer and after I'm going to start typing away. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Maybe it's not. Maybe after all this time, Right. After all these years, her name isn't Sandy or Sandra. So I clicked on each one of those three women. One of them had a marriage certificate that was attached to her name. Interesting. Clearly a new last name, right? So you don't have to take your husband's name, but I would think that that maybe she, maybe she took her husband's last name. Right, of course. So I yes. now had a potential first name and a potential yeah. last name. Right. I looked this person up on Facebook. I saw a picture of the woman that was in the profile. I'm like, hallelujah to the Halloween gods. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she looks just like she looked then. Right. I like I found her. My wife walked in the room and she, my wife was as nonchalant as you could possibly. She's like, oh yeah, that's her. That's her. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> he- now your next, at least my next thought would be, I've, I've spent all this time, you know, uh, tracking this person down, this energy I've waited for this month. Cause it hasn't just been, you know, the summer of 18. I mean, it's been like, you know, six or seven years yeah. that you've been off and on sort of trying to find her. Yeah. And now, so you find her, you have her, but now it's now comes a whole new set of sort of predicaments because now it's, it's sort of like, well, now that I found her, but there's no guarantee that she's going to be receptive to the idea of all of this, of, of, of her character being a, and I know that she's in the room right now. I feel like we're talking about her like she's not in the room, um, but there's no guarantee. Well, you know, we can let Sandy obviously, you know, um, vouch for this, but there's no, in my mind to be like, well, how receptive is she going to, does she know? Does she even know that there is this whole world that exists where this character she played for, you know, a couple of scenes 40 years ago uh, is so revered and loved. And and now that's a whole new set of, ah, Jesus might be all for nothing anyway, right? I mean, I'm sure that kind of hit your mind. It hit my mind. And listen, it hit my mind that she wasn't even going to respond to a message because I'm a psychopath or somewhere, right. somebody that's, you know, that's, that's trying to track her down. I didn't even know, I didn't even know what to say. Right. So, so I sent a Facebook message and I'm watching the TV show, Big Brother right? yes. <laughs> with, with my wife. <laughs> and she, and, and my Facebook message basically said, Hey, this is who I am. This is not, I, I'm not a crazy person. Right. Are you Sandy Johnson from the movie Halloween? Right. And I'm sitting there watching Big Brother and my phone goes off and it goes off all day anyway, because I have like a hundred clients that I, that I do business with in the convention world. And I open it up and I look at it and I look at my wife. I'm like, oh my God, it's her. Because <laughs> like, all she responded with was, yes, I am. I'm like, holy, I can't believe all of this time has come down to this. It's come down to this. And, then, and it, sorry, I, I, I was just going to say, so it's yes, I am. And that still doesn't release your nerves because you're like, well, okay, it's just a confirmation, but now I still need to figure out, you know, I know what I mean? You need to go to the next step, right? I know, yeah, and that's what I did. I, I made my wife pause the show. I sent another message. I'm like, hey, this is what I do for a living. This is my company. Can I communicate with you about potentially doing appearances in the autograph world? Right. And, and Sandy was very cordial. She sent a thing back. She goes, yes, I, let, let's talk. I don't quite understand what, you know, why sure. anyone would want to meet me. Right? Sure. And I'll let her share this part because she has <laughs> her own ideas, you know, what was going on in her head behind there. But she said, let's talk tomorrow on the phone because her husband was sleeping at the time and she didn't want to wake him up. So it was late. It was like 10 o'clock at night. Of course. Um, and then we talked on the phone the next day and that's where we really went through, you know, all of the, hey, this is what I do. This is what the fans like, what they're looking for. This is you know, your, your role in this movie while small in the beginning of the first film is significant in the culture 
of these series of films that are now, you know, not some 1978, you know, small budget film, you know, made by, uh, you know, a director that was maybe a little known right. at the time. You know what I mean? Right. So, oh, one so, second, uh, guys. Hang on a sec. We've, uh, one second. Let me just, uh, we've had a bit of a hiccup here. One second. I'll get them back, folks. Stay, uh, you guys are still there, but there's a bit of a hiccup on the, uh, let's capture one second. Oh, what's going on here? Did I, did we lose Sandy? Is she there still? I still see her. So see her? Oh, one second, folks. Hang on a sec, folks. We're going to try and just one second here. Let's see if we can get them back. And I uh, wonder what happened there. There we go. Oh, I don't. Uh, oh, there she is. Okay, one second. I think I know what happened here. Uh, there we are. I think. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> one minute. This will just take a second. We are. Are you wait a sec? There we go. Okay, and I think we are. One second. Apologies. Oh, there, there I go. Apologies for this, folks. Just stand by while I uh, get this figured out here. There we are, and there we are. We are back. All right, Rick, take it away. Okay. Well, why don't why don't we do this? I mean, why don't why don't you let Sandy kind of share the portion of you know what how she sure. felt when some random stranger was contacting her for right. the first time in however many years about you know being Judith right. Myers. Right. Yes. Okay, Sandy. Uh, take it away, Sandy. Uh, you pick up from from this point and uh, and let me know sort of yeah what uh, what what was going through your mind. You're sitting at home. What were you doing at home uh, when you received this message? And what did you think when you received this message? I was sitting on the couch and my husband was sleeping next to me because I'm the night owl. And I was actually playing words with friends. That's usually what I do at night. So I was sitting there playing with words with friends and this random message comes through asking me if I am Sandy Johnson from Halloween. And on a one to 10 of random, <laughs> this was like a 20. I just, I thought, what in the world? I hadn't even thought about Halloween in probably 30 years. And why someone would suddenly appear on Facebook asking me this question was just like totally nuts. Right. And so my first uh, once I got over the what is this, who is this person? And then when he starts talking about conventions and that this movie is iconic and I'm just thinking, what? I just, I was just like, wow. Now, were you, um, were is you, this guy nuts? Were you aware of Halloween's pop culture footprint at all? I mean, were you aware of, of, of it at all, or was it just something you did 40 years ago? You're you're aware that it's a, a mo how, how aware were you, or were you not, of Halloween's pop culture footprint? I was totally unaware. I, I um, hadn't seen Halloween since probably the first time. I had never seen any of the other Halloweens, paid no attention when they came out. I was living a totally different life. And um, so that's what I said. This was like, like so totally random. It just like reached out to me from 40 years ago and put itself there on my, uh, <laughs> my Facebook page. <laughs> and so it was crazy. And he's telling me that this is now an iconic film and that all these people know who I am and that they would love to meet me. And I'm just sitting there thinking, I, I can't process any of this stuff it's late at night my husband's sleeping next to me I can't even wake him up <laughs> so <laughs> it was just it was like totally crazy I'm sure I didn't get a wink of sleep and of course I immediately got on Google and did something I had never ever done before which was Google my name and Halloween and all of this and just all of this stuff started coming up that I had no idea about fascinating so, now, i mean so yeah. you google your name and it's like a treasure trove of personal information that you had no idea that was i, I mean had, i had never googled my name before right 
Right. <laughs> Interesting. And what was your first yeah. thought seeing seeing all of this? Um well, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm a bit of a spiritual person. And sometimes when I want thing, I put a lot, want something to happen. I put a lot of energy into that. And I, I do visualizations and such. And I really wanted something big to happen in my life. I just felt like things had slowed down a lot. There were a lot of things that Dan and I wanted to do. And it just wasn't quite happening. So I was putting a lot of energy into asking for something that was outside of the norm. And I've done this a lot in my life and, I, and it's, it's amazing how many times it's happened for me. So it was interesting that for a few months before this, I had really been concentrated and asking for something big and outside of the box to happen. So when this was happening, I was just sitting there going, wow <laughs> i think it's <laughs> happening again <laughs> it was something my mother always taught me she was the one that uh, uh really believed in visualization and seeing yourself um go places even if you don't know where that is just Correct. a lot of positive energy and visualization and so that's just what i was sitting there i was like going wow this is this is not something I had thought about. <laughs> right. So, and it's, you that's know, so what I was thinking about is that. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say that it's so important to al allow, you know, the, the, the spontaneity of the universe. Sometimes it's, it's, it's good to take your hand off the wheel. That's figuratively speaking folks, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and sort of allow, <laughs> allow things to spontaneously happen you know when we i i find in my life that if you try to control everything so you know uh you tend to you know you you, you don't allow the spontaneity of things to you know uh to organically happen so that that is really really cool and to rick's point as well is that it's it's funny you know you know he's right i, I mean you don't have to be an arnold Schwarzenegger or a Harrison Ford or somebody of uh, who's been a A-list star, you know, for f forever. I mean, is 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 that kind of level? I mean, you can be in something that you know just once. All all it takes is just one, you know, and you may not even be aware of it, you know. But you're you're in something that for whatever reason. You know, the timing was right, the cosmos was right, the stars were aligned, and it becomes the most profitable horror, independent horror film ever made at that time, and spawns a franchise that, you know, for better or worse, <laughs> that, that is that is 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 hugely popular. And your character was the one that what's interesting, it's it's not that you're just a I think you're not just a character in the Halloween franchise, your character is a symbol because it is the beginning of something. It's the beginning of this. I mean, we, we don't know why this little six year old child. I mean, did you not have a good relationship with your sister? You know, did you, we don't know. It's the enigma. It's the, it's the, it's the ambiguity of all this. And, and you were his first for all intents and purposes, sacrifice, you know, and why, why is that? And so your character, the character, uh, the OG, you, uh, has been sort of a symbol of the beginnings of that mystery. And uh, you yourself became a mystery, for, you know, for many, many years. So, but to Rick's point, I mean, you, you, you can be in something that is so, that just one time, and it has such an emotional impact on fans all around the world, you know, and uh, it's, it's truly remarkable. Um, so, okay, so Rick, now, we know how Sandy felt and we know that she's there. She can't wake her husband up. You know, she's thinking to herself, well, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't wake my husband up. This is crazy. Um, you know, did you then respond to her then and there, or did you wait till the next morning to respond? No, I responded to her right away. I said, right away. I will, you give me a telephone number and I will call you whatever time you want tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, and I will, we'll get on the phone. And, and, and that's what I did the next morning. I, I think it was like mid afternoon. She had me call her. Uh, we talked again. I, uh, 
I, I still think that she was a little like, ah, what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Because I can imagine, I mean, as Halloween, as a big Halloween fan, as somebody who has been so invested for a long time, I mean, since I was five years old, was the first time I watched it, you know, it, it does, and I can see, you know, um, people in the chat uh, thinking this, and, and, and I do understand it, that you become so emotionally invested in something sure. that it's sometimes very difficult for you to understand that, you know, and I, 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 I have this, believe it or not, even in the voiceover, um, you know, side of things that at the end of the day, we, we don't know as actors, we don't know what is going to be successful or what isn't. You might have a feeling of something, you might have an idea, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it is a job and you go and you do a job and you have a lot of fun and you do the best you possibly can and you make, you know, friends and connections and, and all that's great. But if you do remove yourself or if you go on and you're not maybe as invested in the industry as you once were or you've moved on from it or you don't have your pulse to the it's possible that you may have no idea that there's <laughs> there's all this crazy stuff happening around you. Sandy so, definitely had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, you could tell just by the way she was talking, <laughs> she had no idea. It may sound crazy, folks. <laughs> For those of you that are in the chat room, it may sound crazy, but it, it it is true. I mean, even Nick Castle said the same thing about, you know, about that, you know, under a certain, he was like, I had no idea that, you know, I saw my face. I, I think he said he saw his face on MSN.com as famous horror faces or something. He thought my face is a famous horror face. That's awful. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it can, yeah, totally unbelievable. Anyway, I digress. So, so you, you get on the phone and we, we, we chat. She was very open to the, to the, the you know, to what I was saying about, doing a convention or two or trying to find, you know, something to sort of bring her back to the, you know, to the consciousness and, and put a face right. to the character essentially. Of course. And, um, you know, I had had um, uh, thoughts about where she should go. And I, I mean, I don't think that there was any other, you know, there wasn't a better place to bring her than bring her to the, you know, to the Pasadena show. I mean, this is, you know, celebrating oh, yeah. Halloween. How could you not go there for your debut? And there exactly. were some shows that were before that. Right. And, and we're just like, you know, I, I think after I talked to her and after I announced her on my Facebook, uh, I called Nathan from Horror Hound. I, I called Sean Clark, who was additionally looking for her for a period of time. Right. Um, and I was like, you know, we, let's let's all get together because this is where she's got a debut. And she did. And, you know, we get there, you know, not to fast forward too much. But I and I know that, you know, this I want to talk to Sandy about stuff with the movie, too. You know, we get there and her line is, you know, behind the table, down the hallway, wrapped around <laughs> and just the look on her face. She's like, this is all for me. I'm like, yeah, this is. You signed a lot of posters today. This is 40 <laughs> years of, of buildup right here. This is 40 years of, of, of excitement in this line. <laughs> yeah, because even, even PJ Souls was there, right, right next to us. Yes. And I've known PJ for a long time. And yeah. I had asked her, hey, do you know how to, you know, the years ago, do you know how to right. contact Sandy Johnson? She's like, no, but I'd love to see her again. <laughs> you know, she goes, yes. that would be great. If, and I, I contacted, I, I won't even, it would take the whole podcast to talk about how many resources I tried to reach out to, to find her, you know, and it was simply came down to my wife saying, Sandy's probably not her real first name. I'm not going to give her that credit, but, but no, you know. no, no, which, <laughs> which, no, 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 but it, it's myself. I can't give too much to my wife, but. And in this business, that's entirely possible. Yeah. That, you know? that was it. That's all it took was her. Yeah. Her, her first name's probably not Sandy. Right. Um, and, and if her last name was really Johnson and she was married and took the husband's name that, you know, it, as you said earlier, really that makes difficult. it even hard. Right. Yeah, exactly. Really and Sandy, yeah. what, what Sandy was just a nickname, right? Yes. I was given a nickname, um, by a friend of the family because I had Sandy blonde hair. Oh, that's go. really, there you go, folks. <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. Indeed. Now, what, what month was this? It was the summer of 18, right? Summer of 18. Yeah, it was, um, I want to say it was August, late August of 2018, because then we signed up to do, uh, what was it, H40, right? We yep. signed up to do H40, which started, which was in like October. Of, That's right. Early October, like October 3rd and 4th. Yeah. So that makes sense Same then. Year. I mean, 
Yeah, that 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 makes sense then that, uh, uh, you know, you connect with her in the late summer, late August. There were probably, you know, as you said, a couple of conventions that you could have debuted at between then and Pasadena. But since Pasadena was only essentially, you know, six to eight weeks away. Literally, yeah. Why not wait? And it gives Sandy time to get comfortable with the idea, yeah. ask more questions, get mentally prepared. Um and there's time to market it as well. So yeah. I think that's... that's it was a uh, no-brainer. Yeah, that a, show was a no-brainer. It, uh, yeah. it was the only one that had to be the first one. So. Yeah, for sure. Very interesting. So, Sandy, now on your end, when you get off the phone with Rick and you put that phone down, what are you thinking at that moment? Do you immediately turn to your husband? Or are, do you have a moment alone where you're thinking, is this, is this the answer I've been looking for? Like, what is your first thought when you hang up that phone? Um, well, I did look over at my husband and he was sound asleep and he has a hard time sleeping. And I knew I, if I woke him up with this, he would immediately think that some perv had contacted me in the middle of the night and want me to get off of social media forever. <laughs> so I, um, I did not wake him up, but I sat there thinking, what is he going to think about this? Um, you know, is he going to think it's okay? Is he going to be totally against it? Is he going to think that some crazy person contacted me in the night, like I said, and I shouldn't be on social media you know, after 10? Right. And so um, I, I, the first thing I did was look up Rick's um, website right to see if it, there was actually a website that had activity for a while it wasn't something he just put up that night or anything <laughs> and then i started googling my name and his name and horror cons because i had never i had never heard of a horror con i had heard of comic cons i'd never been to one but i knew what they were right but i had never heard of a horror con so I wanted to see what that was and, you know, what you do there. And I was just, wow. It was just like a whole nother world that I was totally unaware of. So I was educating myself probably till two or three in the morning. And um, then I woke up the next day and I was sitting there, sitting there having coffee thinking, how do I, how do I, approach this <laughs> with my husband right <laughs> um because i i would like to do it it sounded like a lot of fun and and i would love to meet the fans but of course uh, he is my husband and has to go along with this of course so uh it, it took a little talking to i just first Asked him if he remembered that I had been in a movie called Halloween. And I just started from that aspect. And then I said that I had been contacted and um, by Rick. And of course, his first reaction was, well, how, how do you know this guy? And, and uh, is this it's a good question? Thing? So we went through that whole thing. And I worked through it with showing him the Google and Rick's website and just talking about it. And uh, finally, at some point, he was convinced and said, okay, well, you know, you're not going to this alone. I'm not going to let you go alone. And so I said, no, of course not. So he said, all right, well, if I can be there to know that you're safe and, and, and meet this Rick, <laughs> then I guess we can do it. So uh, that's kind of how that process went. Very interesting. Um and of course, obviously, you guys met, and everything turned out for, for, for the best. That's uh, what a, what a very neat, um, but yeah, it's it just it, it feels like it was meant to be, yeah. you know, and uh, and certainly uh, you know a lot of work goes into something like that, and and it turned out for the best. And what better time? And of course, it just it was it just happened by circumstance, but right in time for the 40th anniversary, which which is really, really cool. Yeah, um, you know, the, 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 there's also other, you know, there's great benefits sometimes when you're when you're doing this job as well. And, and you know, besides being able to bring Sandy to the convention world and all those fans, I yeah. mean, the, the after effect where, you know, then she's able to connect with Bloom House, who they get That's the, right. they get the, you know, the okay from her to put her in the film. That's right. Sandy gets an invite to the to the premiere. She gets to walk a red carpet. And all this. I mean, that's got to be great for 
you know, for her as well. I mean, amazing for, I'm sure, I'm sure she'll tell you that story, but you know, that, that, that made an extra for me. Of course. You know, sometimes, you know, you do this job and, you know, the, the celebrities get, you know, you know, all, all these fans that kind of dote over them and tell them how their films make them feel. And the promoters, a lot of the times get, you know, wow, I can't believe you, you know, you got Sandy Johnson there. And sometimes us agents, we kind of just were in the background and I'm an, I'm a very in the background person anyway, at the events, right. like, you know, uh, um, but, but uh, it's nice to be able to know that you helped make a group of fans happy, a whole bunch of promoters happy. And then again, forget the shows. I mean, Sandy's able to go out and walk a red carpet with her husband and whatnot. And she looks fabulous, by the way, at that red carpet. And, and she got to do that. And that's just great for her too. So it, yeah. it, it, all, it all worked out great. It all worked yeah, out the, the, the residual long-term effects can be incredibly positive for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, no, I completely understand that. Um, Sandy, let's, let's go back. Let's go way back. Um, let's go back to before Halloween, what were you doing? What, no, no, what, what was your goal? What was your goal in life? How did you end up, um, uh, cause I think Playboy was before Halloween, if I'm not mistaken, were you doing, were you wanting to pursue a career in modeling and acting? Was that sort of the, the path you were on and that's how that came to be? Let's go back to before Halloween, what, what was sort of your life like in, say, 1975, 76? My um, initial interest was dance. I loved to dance. I loved to choreograph. So in high school, middle school, college, that was my interest was dance, uh, modern dance. And then I got into uh, an interest in acting. So I was doing workshops and improv groups and, uh, you know, those sorts of things. I, and then of course, um, my uh, father got very sick. You probably heard the story. My father got cancer and um, he wanted to go to Mexico for treatment and he did not have the money for that. So I needed to make money. So that's how um, Playboy came about, was it was a way to make the money that I needed to get mm. um, my father uh, to Mexico. Mm. So my stuff kind of shifted at that point. I obviously, more jobs started to come my way. I got more interested in acting and um, modeling. I've always loved modeling from, I, I don't know, I was probably 12 and I was doing the modeling schools and entering the local, um, contests. I had an uncle that used to, he was like a councilman or something. And he used to make sure I was entered in all the local beauty contests and that sort of thing. So acting, modeling, photography, dance, that whole thing was kind of what I loved. Interesting. Were you, were you, what kind of a kid were you? Were you like an extroverted kid? Were you a cheeky kind of kid? Were you always the one that was the life of the party or were you a bit more reserved or shy? Um, as a young child, I was actually a bit of a meanie, a bully in the neighborhood when I was maybe five. <laughs> and, and, uh, I was constantly getting in trouble and drug home for like hitting kids and stuff and for being like a five and six year old bad girl. Mm. And, um, and then I transitioned into um, more of an introvert and okay. with uh, my mother who had um, bipolar and other mental issues. I, I loved her very much and sometimes she was fine and sometimes not fine. So right. I was pretty depressed as a child. My dad wanted me to come live with him, but I really felt that I needed to be with my mother. Yes. Um, and I was probably the only one that believed that, but I stayed nonetheless. And my right. father was kind enough to let me stay. He, he didn't right. have to. But because of that, I was not, hap not a happy child. Um, it was the 60s, which was kind of a 
crazy time. It was LA, you know. Mm. Uh, so not a particularly happy time. I, I did end up making my very best friend, who is still my best friend, Liz. So oh, I, I got a really good friend out of that. Mm. But yeah, it wasn't a happy time for me. And then, of course, I, I lost my father soon after I lost my mother. Right. So it took a while for me to kind of pull out of all of that. And um, some of those lessons that I was talking about before, positive thinking, um, believing in yourself, the things that my mother, even though she was struggling herself, she always wanted me to not go there like she had. Right. Interesting. Um, no, it's, it's, it's never easy losing parents. I, I lost both my parents. Um, uh, they had been divorced for, for about 25 years or so, but I, I lost them, uh, about two and a half months from each, um, two and a half months apart in 2011. Wow. And, uh, my dad died of a heart attack. My mother was cancer and it's, it was never, it, it, it never is easy. You know, it's, it really is a life changing, um, you know, and it's true. They say that you never really get over it. You just get used to the fact that they're not there. You know, you sort of just get accustomed to that. They're, you know, they're not there. But if you, if you're fortunate enough to have a good relationship with your parents, you know, you always, you know, it's always a whole, you know, so I do, I do understand right. that. And, and, and you were quite young. So, I mean, you know, I was. Um, yeah, I was 32 when I lost them. So, um, okay. So um, now 1978 rolls around. What are you doing? What are you doing in your life when you get this call to be in this little low-budget independent horror movie called Halloween? What were you doing? Were you modeling? Were you dancing at that time? Were you doing little bit things? And how did the call come in? Did you have an agent? Was it somebody you knew who somebody you knew? How did that all sort of transpire? I was um, working as a model. I did have an agent. It was the uh, Playboy Agency. Okay. I was I was working quite a bit. I was, like I said, doing acting lessons. I was living on the beach, so mm. I've always been a water baby. So I spent Santa a lot of time running on the beach and swimming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, I also did other things, fast food, whatever, you know, restaurants. I worked at a private club in Beverly Hills, just whatever you did to make ends meet as a actress model. Of course. Very interesting. And, and how, how did the call, what, how did Halloween enter your life? Um, Halloween entered my life because, like I said, I was going out on a lot of acting and modeling calls, and uh, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, they were looking for someone that was an actress and also was okay with nudity. Right. So I'm sure that's probably why I made the, the short list. <laughs> and so I was called out <laughs> to the interview. Uh, at a house, actually, it was probably one of the houses that they had been using would be my guess. Mm. And I was um, interviewed by s several people. They asked me a lot of questions. I read, I think, several different parts. And I remember that they had me scream, which was really strange because it was a neighborhood. And I kept thinking, um, what are the neighbors thinking about this person screaming in the house next door? That's right. So During that's the daytime, one of the memories right. I have from the actual interview. Yeah, it was the screaming. Um, but other than that, it was just another, as we called them in those days, go sees. So I, nice. it was just another go see in my day. And yes. uh, I went home and the next, I, I, it was soon after maybe the next day that the agency called me and said that, I had been cast uh, as Judith Myers, and of course, I was thrilled. Of course, uh, to have another movie. Of course, and so when you are the, what when you get to the set, uh, I'm assuming they they are shooting at at night. Um, and what do you 
when you think back on that time and shooting your scenes, do you recall how long it took to shoot your scenes? It, I mean, was it two nights? Was it over two nights? Or was I it don't one night? think so. I think we, I actually got there fairly early in the day. Mm. And we, because we were, well, first of all, the, although it's the first scene in the movie, it was one of the very last scenes shot because the house itself was pretty run down. Right. So they did all of those first and then they fixed it up to make it new. So they were actually doing some of the final renovation on the house that day. So it was kind of a busy set. And I remember that we were doing a lot of just kind of casual run throughs, you know, marking where we would come in and up the stairs and just basic set stuff. Sure. And then we did, then they started actually, um, you know, directing and saying how they wanted the scenes and all of that and going through the lines. And uh, we actually did um, two takes. Uh, two two where takes. We of, actually were filming. I mean, we two two uh, two, two takes. actual film takes. Right, right. Of two two takes of uh oh right because it's all one take. Right, right. Two two takes of the tracking shot. Right. Right. And, so right. it's it's a very long shot, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that go, can go wrong. So we did a lot of practicing I bet. for everybody. The, you know, the camera crew and everybody to stay out of the way because it's not the usual take and then break down and move. Everybody had to stay out of the way and Mike's out of the way and all of that for that whole scene. Right. So um, we did a lot of practicing and then uh, finally, I think it was maybe two takes. Two takes. Um, now, when 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 you are, are, when you rap and you... And John Carpenter says, you know, cut, that's great. That's a, that's a wrap for you, Sandy. Everything's good. Thank you so much. You were terrific. Uh, and you leave. And are you, are you aware from that moment on when you're not connected to the mood, you know, you, you've done your job, you've, you've been paid. Uh, did you go see, were you, did you go see the movie in the theater? Was there ever a, a moment where you were able to see it? Was there was there an after party that, that they had? I don't know if there was a like an official premiere premiere, but in, I mean, there's always a premiere in, in terms of the, the you know where it's playing first, but not like a big huge sort of uh, premiere. But were were you sort of invited to to anything with the cast and crew? What was your first? Your first experience, I guess I'm trying to say, is is the, the first time you saw the movie. Right. They did have a party, and I was invited. Okay. And we did go to a theater. It obviously wasn't Brahmin's Chinese or anything, but no, it was no. <laughs> at a theater. It was the first showing. Right. And I was there with the cast, and we were all sitting there together. So, yes, I did see it for the first time with the, crap, with the cast on the big screen. <laughs> That's terrific. So, and it was fun. Yeah, yeah I bet. it was fun. And of course, it was a very scary movie. Absolutely. Uh, certainly, yes, for its time, uh, definitely. I all, you know, I always tell people, I mean, you know, of course, as you grow and as, you know, technology evolves and production value evolves and, and things like that, obviously things begin to look a little dated. But the great thing about Halloween is that it's it's its simplicity, is it's it's theater of the mind storytelling is timeless in a lot of ways and maybe the production value might look a bit dated but the enjoyment is in is in the execution and uh and i still think it's it's uh it's terrific today um Which makes it more believable absolutely rick right? yeah no- it, the, the scariest movies made are the ones that are man that could happen uh, yes. <laughs> you know, exactly. when you see a scary movie that's got all these special effects and, and everything, you're like, oh, that was scary. But right. I mean, that can never happen. You know, no, there's, it, there's something subtle about, you know, a guy hiding behind a bush with a with a mask on. And you're like, yeah, you're 100%. Like, that be tomorrow. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. I tell you know, I tell my viewers all the time, I say, you know, the best, especially to the youngers, uh, the youngers, the younger folks who 
watch me. I say, you know, the, the best way to enjoy an old black and white film or a film maybe that is, you know, like The Exorcist or Halloween or even, you know, All About Eve or some sort of classic movie, Psycho, is, is to always remember the world it was when it was released that th things like this didn't exist, right. you know, and, 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 you know, like, you know, I often say that Psycho was the first, it may have been the first movie, but I believe it was the first North American film where you ever saw a toilet flush. You know, I mean, that's the world you live in <laughs> right. at that time. I mean, and, you know, Janet Lee was, a, I mean, to see somebody like Janet Lee, a starlet, a goddess of the murdered in such a horrific, I mean, it was terrifying, terrifying for the audience. You know, now we see it, you know, hook, line and sinker every day. You know, there's, there's a movie like that being released all the time right. with some sort of name attached. And, you know, but in the case of Halloween, I mean, it was, it was terrifying, you know, right. and, and people hadn't. You know, it, it was psycho-ish and it was psycho-esque, and but it was in this way instead. And it was Halloween. It was the first movie that ever had a Halloween and a Halloween took place on Halloween. My God, this is terrifying. And when you watch it within that context of where the world is, uh, I find going back and watching older films uh, really helps you appreciate uh, the movie that much more because then you don't get so lost in the, you know, the, well, this looks a little dated and that effect is kind of cheesy. And you think about, yes, but, <laughs> you know, in 1978 or in 1960, it was state of the art. Sure. And, uh, no, you're, you're, you're bang on with that. Um, so, okay. So you, you watch the premiere there you are with the cast. You're at the little theater. You're having a great time, right? You're all excited. The movie is scary. From that moment on, Sandy, where does your life take you from that moment on? And because over the last 40 years, when Rick found you, you were like, oh, my God, I had no idea that this was even a thing. So when you leave that premiere, were you aware that Halloween was becoming a cultural phenomenon in the world of independent horror? Were you aware of of the of it becoming the highest grossing independent horror movie of all time at that time? Were you aware of little things like that, or were you sort of moved on from that, diving into your next projects? Right, I wasn't aware. I mean, I had a great time. I went home and went back to my regular calls for interviews and other films and um, I did that for several years and then I actually got married uh, not to my current husband but I got married and I ended up uh, moving to Oregon but not to have 10 kids at a cult or anything <laughs> right. as, the, as you might find somewhere. Maybe, maybe I actually that... didn't have any children. <laughs> right, right. And maybe that's the rumor. I was not rumor. in a commune. Right, yeah. okay, gotcha. Uh, I did get married. I did move to Oregon. I did leave Hollywood behind. Uh, it was not a successful marriage. Um, right. I, I was very much in love, but... Uh, drugs and other things mm. uh, affected uh, my spouse and I wasn't ready uh, to deal with that. I and, understand. And he wasn't ready to give it up. So we did Too end bad. up divorcing. Right. Um, I fell back in depression again. And that's when I left Oregon and I went back to Texas, back right. into the arms of the family I did still have. Right. Uh, my parents, of course, of course were gone, but uh, my sisters, and, uh, and I became a teacher. Oh, and, very cool. Uh, and what, what uh, were you teaching? Uh, of, I was teaching science to um, special needs kids, uh, middle cool. school. And I right. uh, was a, yeah, I was a private uh, teacher for middle school kids that were, had learning disabilities. I mean, many of them were very, very bright but mm -hmm. they had different learning challenges that um, needed one-on-one. -on -one, and I was a hands-on kind of teacher. So it worked out very well. I loved that job. And that's why I wasn't paying attention to Halloween or Googling myself because I was too busy learning how to deal and um, enrich the lives of children. Fascinating. 
interesting. Yeah, no, that's so important for people to understand because when you are, when you do remove yourself from what is known as the Hollywood bubble, you know, and you, and you sort of, you know, you move to Oregon and then you move, you know, to Texas and you're sort of, you're, you're moving on. If you're not making the conscious effort to look into things or to keep up on what's going on, or if you don't have people in your circle that, uh, that are doing that for you, it can be very easy to not know what's going on and, and not know how your character has, has become a, a pop culture horror icon in many ways, you know, and the next thing you know, some guy named Rick is face is, is sending you a message on this weird thing called Facebook, you know, in the year 2018, right. you know, and it's like, what do you mean? I'm, and there, and there you are, there's all your photos and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I totally understand, you know, it's, it's like when you watch, you know, fans will be at a convention and, and I, I you know, I watched this with Mark Hamill, who of course is Luke from, you know, the, uh, Star Wars films and, 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 you know, the fans, they're so passionate, they're dedicated and they're amazing. And they're asking him all oh, this, 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 and this. And he's sitting there and he's thinking, I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> but, the, but the fans know everything. I mean, the fans know more about Luke than Mark Hamill could ever dream of knowing or remembering, you know? And it's just, exactly. it's that, it's that level of, because it's always there. It's always that top of mind, you know? So, um, you know, and then you do it, you do the job and, you know, you walk away, you know, and 40 years later, there you are again. So, um, interesting that, that, that's really fascinating. Um, so what are now, uh, what are some of your goals now? I mean, now that you're, you know, it's the year 2020, of course, it's been a bit of a tricky kind of year for everybody. Um, but now <laughs> that you have Rick here as, as your master agent and, and, uh, you are doing the convention circuit and, and you are, um, you know, experiencing, reconnecting with, with fans and the horror and Halloween community. Uh, do you have any goals from here? I mean, in this, in this stage of your life, what are your goals now? Have they changed from where they were maybe say four or five years ago? Is this a new sort of lease on life moving forward in this, in this area? Yes. And thank you, Rick, for changing my life. My life, <laughs> life has definitely changed. <laughs> uh, my I, um, all my fun. I mean, I've always been a busy person. <laughs> right. The, the last time I was bored was probably middle school. So I've always been a busy, active person. I left depression long time ago. Right. Um, when I got remarried, I, I became the happy person that I needed to be. So life sure. has been good. Um, I have no regrets about all those years away from Hollywood. That's However, fantastic. Now that it has come back to see me again, it is very exciting. You know, the first con, I didn't know how I would feel about it or what it would be like. I didn't know what the people would be like. Um, That's right. So, I mean, I live in rural Texas, so it's kind of a quiet life. So here I am at this huge con with thousands of people who are so happy to see me and get to know me. And I, I didn't know how it would be, but what was crazy is that it was awesome. I absolutely loved the fans. They were so kind and so sweet and so generous yeah. and so much fun to talk to that I, I just fell in love with all of them. Amazing. And I thought, you know, this is so much fun. And I, of course, I reconnected with the other Halloween cast and they were awesome and just brought me right in and were good to oh, me great. and loving. And so it was just like, wow. And Amazing. then, um, of course, Rick set me up at some other cons. And again, I just had the best time. I was looking forward to them. And not only was I looking forward to them, but now my husband is looking forward to them. <laughs> so <laughs> That's he, great. in fact, there was... One, I didn't take him to because my best friend was going to be there. And so we decided that I wanted some quality time for her. And you know what? I've never heard the end of that. The <laughs> one he missed. So, <laughs> the one so he missed. and he's told me I can't do that again. He has to be there. So anyway, that the, at first, of course, it was just to do other cons and things because I was having a great time and it was tons of fun. And then when I did Texas Frightmare, um, uh, several of the fans kept asking me if I did social media, did I have 
a, a Facebook or an Instagram. And I did not. So I, um, uh, Kim, who works with um, Rick and often uh, helps me at shows and things, she was talking to me and she said, I can help you set up a Facebook and Instagram. I just actually put so your she was Instagram. Kind enough to help me. I put your Instagram right on. Uh, I meant to have this up earlier, but for some reason, when I uh, connected, it didn't show up. So I put your Instagram uh, on the page so people can see it there. It's Unicorn Sandy J. At Unicorn yes, Sandy J so, is your Instagram. So and that Rick's unicorn Twitter is there as well. Came from Rick. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, he called me a unicorn, so I'm now Unicorn Sandy J. Um, so, so anyway, I I said, okay, well now I have a Facebook, but uh, what do I do to keep fans? Well, first of all, what do I do to get fans here, and what do I do to keep them here so that I can interact with them and stuff? And so initially, I just, I mean, I had some old photos and things, but I thought, how long is this going to last? Mm, true. So I thought, you know, I really should do a photo shoot or something. So I found a photographer, and I did a photo shoot, and we got um, several hundred photos, which I thought should last for a while, <laughs> but not so much when you're <laughs> posting every day. And um, a, a lot of them were just kind of glamour shots not so much Halloween right so when the next time came around I thought you know I should really do some role-playing and do some Halloween stuff that would be fun mm -hmm. so that's when we got into um, making me be Judith and um, getting uh, my husband and another friend to come in and do the Michaels and coming up with what I thought would be some cool shots and like I said, photography and modeling and all that and acting was my background. So I just pulled from that creativity to come up with, you know, what I thought would be fun to do right. and might photograph well. And of course the fans ended up loving them. So um, I do, I, that's I kind follow, of where that went. It, it looks great. I, I follow you on Instagram and, and uh, uh, some of the photos that you post, are, I get a real kick out of them because they're, they're, they're fun to see you've you've taken the character and you've brought her into the 21st century, you know, and that's and that's and that's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to see. Yeah, well, it was fun, too, because I had my own ideas, of course, and Danny had some, but I put it out to the fans, too. And I said, give me your ideas. What would you like to see? And I got some awesome ideas from the fans as well. So right. it was kind of a collaborative effort with all of us. And then I started um, getting uh, people contacting me to do other podcasts and that sort of thing. So I branched into that. I've done a lot of those. And then I started getting um, other filmmakers contacting me saying, you know, I might have this film coming up or um, I had one of them, the Agent 11, I think it is. He used um, some of my actual Playboy films, the ones, uh, Playboy pictures, the ones that were me sitting on the beach and walking my dogs and stuff. He actually put those on the wall in his movie. Cool. And then I have a film that's supposed to be, I'm supposed to be shooting it if all, if everything calms down in the mm. UK mm. sometime soon. So nice. then I thought, okay, well, maybe I should do acting lessons again. So then I found a coach. I have an online coach Great. that I'm working with. So I've been working with him on monologues and different things. Amazing. So that's kind of where I am now. I'm looking forward to doing some films and continuing cons. And I have a, I have an event coming up uh, on July 10th in North Carolina at the, uh, uh, the Myers house which is the duplicate uh, exact replica yes. of the original Myers house. So I'm going to go there and we're going to have an event. I'm going to uh, sign photos and we're all going to watch Halloween together, which will be fun. Amazing. But the day before that at the Myers house, we're going to have another big photo shoot. Mm. So I've been getting ideas again. I've got a whole list of my own plus others. And I've got some other fan friends coming to help me out. So it should be another really good shoot. Yes, I and and I do know uh, who who 
one of those people are, who I will keep a secret because I do know that their child is playing a certain somebody. So I do know that. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I will, I, I will keep, <laughs> I will keep that a secret because I'll let, uh, I'll let him spill the beans. Uh, well, listen, uh, I'd love to uh, move over to the chat room for just a, um, a little bit and ans- and have some questions for you if you guys have a little bit of time. I know we've been here for an hour and five minutes. I don't want to keep you too long, but if you have a little bit longer, I'm sure there are some people in the chat room that would love to ask either of you uh, some questions. So uh, are you guys down for that? I'm down. Absolutely. All right, let's do it, folks. So let's move over to the chat room now. If you have a question for Sandy Johnson, uh, unicorn Sandy Johnson, the unicorn of all (laughs) unicorns, uh, feel free to uh, ask your questions now or for Rick as well. Maybe you have some questions for Rick in regards to how it all came to be, maybe about what a uh, booking agent does. Uh, They're very different than, uh, say, a, a voiceover. I mean, the principle is all the same it's 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 to book you know uh their talent stuff but uh certainly uh it's different than a vo agent or an on-camera agent or a literary agent or you know what have you so maybe you have some questions for rick as well this is your opportunity to uh ask so let's do it up let me see here montana banana says uh and i'm assuming this is for sandy have you seen all of the halloween movies sandy I have not seen them all. I am not a big fan of gore. Um, So I have not seen the Rob Zombie ones because I've told they're very gory. And I'm more of a psychological horror kind of person. I don't really care for all the blood and gut. I have not seen those. Very cool. Uh, Zachary Azar Azar says, um, what is your favorite memory from working on Halloween? Um, probably the makeout scene. That was a fun <laughs> scene to shoot. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. One Minute Man, I, I think, is, is how it's usually Yeah, uh, there you uh, go. Phrased. There you go. <laughs> Obviously, the couch part, that lasted longer. <laughs> it did. I think it did, actually. I think, it, I think from the door to the couch lasted longer than anything else in that in that moment that's yeah everybody always laughs at that that's uh that's funny frank Riker sends in a super chat to the channel thank you frank says uh uh thanks rick and sandy sandy how many uh tombstones have you signed so far (laughs) wow i have signed hundreds i'm sure because uh, people send them to me to sign. Plus I've been signing them at the cons mm. and the lady, uh, Jennifer was cemetery haunts that hand makes them. She sends them to me to sign. So yes, I have signed a lot of them. Right. Exactly. Uh, Mark Johnson has a question here for Rick, but oh. we, he, he actually answered this earlier in the, uh, in the show. He says, Rick, how did you meet up with Sandy and where did you think you could take Sandy's career after all these decades? Um, if you, I, I don't Mark know if you, in the beginning? I know where, where were you, Mark? Where were you? I mean, if you want to give him, if you want to give him the cliff notes version of that, feel, feel free. Or we could just say, Mark, go back and watch the beginning of the episode. <laughs> watch the beginning of the episode, Mark. But I think, I think Sandy, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 it's great to see what, you know, she wants to, you know, try and accomplish going forward. And I think if it wasn't for the pandemic, um, you know, really just putting, uh, you know, not just a hold on the convention world, but a hold hold on all of Hollywood. I mean, conventions yeah. have essentially been canceled since mid March. Um, I, I don't, I don't know where they're going at, at this point. I, I look at it as a, you know, a daily thing. I, you know, ask me tomorrow what might happen. You know, a week from now, I have no clue. Yeah. Um, but I think once, you know, once. Um, actual Hollywood agents and managers are really starting to focus on bringing in new people because they know there's work, right? I mean, nobody wants to bring in anybody when they when there's no work to be had. Uh, right, exactly. Um, I, I think we'll be able to find Sandy uh, an agent and, and get her out there. And and uh, I think you may be seeing her in, in a few films coming up here soon. You never know. It would be great. It would be great. Wolfman's got nards. He's a, another horror channel in this space. Says, uh, you're coming to the UK, Sandy. Will you be coming to Scotland? The Scottish national animal is bizarrely a unicorn. 
(laughs) (laughs) That's great. I don't think I'm going to be at Scotland this time, although I did have a sister that was in Scotland for a number of years. So I have a nephew that was born there. So I know Mm. it's a beautiful country. So maybe one day. But Maybe. for now, I'm just going to the For Love of Horror in the UK, and I'm very excited about going there. So come on, cons, let it happen. Oh, I know. Come on, industry, open up. <laughs> yes. uh, open let's up. See. Exactly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, super chat from Oliver Mercer. Thank you, Oliver. Says, "Hey, Sandy, big UK fan. Can you say for what your?" Uh, can you say what your new UK film is? Plus, Rick, when did you get into the business? Sandy, can you tell us what the, the, okay. the film is? Or is it, yes, have you signed an it NDA? Is, it is um, on IMBD. I think that's the correct initials, um, right? Yes, IMDB, the yes. I am, IMDB, IMDB. Yeah. I never can yeah. remember which way they go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's on there, actually. But the, the working name, I think, is the moment is Jim, as in exercise, Jim Creeps. Jim Creeps. <laughs> that's, yes. that's great. That's great. Now, <laughs> now, now that's a gym I don't want to go to. Yeah, I'm, no. just, I'm just saying it. That's just, yes. I don't know. If I, if I, it's just, I'm sure it's not, not one I want to go to. Uh, uh, oh, and Rick, uh, when did you get into the business? I, I, I think you mentioned this a little earlier, uh, too. Maybe 08 or somewhere around there? Yeah, I said? started in 2008. I was working with a company where we did primarily sports stars because sports mm. autograph conventions have been around since, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the, 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 the 70s. You know, Mickey Mantle right. was signing autographs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we just noticed that a lot of our sports talent had crossover into into films. We, we, that company repped uh, um, an actor named, uh, or a, a running back named um, Mercury Morris, and we had Ben Davidson who was in Conan and and things like that. So, you know, we were instinctively, we're just looking for some more work for them. And I found right. Chiller Theater, I think in 2009 or 2010, and uh, brought my first actor there. And I was like, wow, this is, great <laughs> like, this, is, this is really really cool i met all right. kinds of people there uh at, at those shows i met martin cove from 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 the karate kid for the first time at, at that Very show cool. and end up repping him i rep him now awesome um and, and then that company that i worked for i want to say like in maybe 2011 or something just the owners decided to do something different with their lives right and when i started calling all the celebrities they're like well we never dealt with anybody but you anyway. So, so right. why don't you just continue on? And that's, and that's what I did. And it, and it was a very, it was a small space of people at that time. And of there course. was like me, Sean Clark, uh, a woman named Karen Cadle, and maybe like a handful, like six or seven other agents at that time. And now, right. it, you know, it, it seems like there's, uh, there's like hundreds. Uh, but right. yeah, that's how I, I, that's how I started. The, the celebrity portion was, was pretty much, because of Ben Davidson from Conan, because he wanted to do a, um, a celebrity show. Faz- <clears throat> Excuse me, fascinating. Yeah. Uh, Jim Dorsey, Super Chat. Thank you, Jim. Says, uh, hi, Sandy. Do you uh, Did you keep any props or clothes or memorabilia from the Halloween set? No. Uh, actually, I just, I just found out recently that I kept wondering, why don't I recognize the clothes that I'm wearing? Because they said everybody in the first Halloween wore their own clothes. Mm. And I kept thinking, why don't I recognize those clothes? It turned out that I was wearing Nancy Loomis's clothes. And she told me that recently at a con. So uh, no, I did not keep anything. And I even had to give the clothes back. Wow, so you were sharing, swapping clothes with Annie. Unbelievable. (laughs) Yes. Unbelievable. The stuff you learn here on the show, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, the Film Addict sends in a super chat. Thank you, buddy. Says, have you seen or talked to John Carpenter since 1978? Thoughts on him as a director? Yes. I met him at the premiere for H 2018. Mm, yes. And um, it was great to see him again. And I think he is a fabulous director. He was oh, great to work with. He was very clear about he, what he wanted. And obviously he's done some fabulous films. Right. 
Very cool. Uh, Woo Hollywood Celebrity says, Hey, Sandy, during the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, did you listen to rap and R&B songs? If so, who is your favorite rapper and singer? Where did you live during the late 90s and 2000s? It's, a, it's an out of the, it's an out of the box question, but it's it's hey, why not, right? Let's ask it. Uh, no, I was not, not a rapper fan. However, when I was working with the kids, sometimes I would use rap to uh, I was I taught a lot of environmental science, so I would use rap as a way to get them to come up with messages and things I wanted them to remember. So I used it, but not right. that I've ever been a great fan of it. And it although I probably like the least favorite of horror films, I really like country music. <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie is Halloween. <laughs> Of course, of course, of course. Okay, let's say of your course. second, your second favorite horror movie. Wow, I, there are a lot of them I really like. I really like The Shining. Oh, brilliant. I love Psycho. Psycho mm. and um, The Exorcist. The Exorcist yeah. was probably the most terrifying film I ever saw. Yeah. The Devil reminded me... Um, well, I didn't realize it till I got back home and I turned on my garbage disposal and immediately <laughs> the garbage disposal sounded like the devil. <laughs> and I like reached over, just I just shut it off. And I actually could not use my garbage disposal for at least a month because it just sounded like that awful devil thing. <laughs> So, yeah, that was a terrifying one. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, that is, that's, see, there you go, folks. Tidbits of information right here, giving you a much better <laughs> rounded picture of Sandy Johnson. Uh, interesting. Uh, let me see here. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Super chat from Billy Joyner. Thank you, buddy. Says, thank you, Dave, for setting this up for uh, up for all of us. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, been an awesome stream. Just ordered my tombstone today. Can Sandy do her Michael line? <laughs> oh, they want you to say, Michael! <laughs> Michael! There you go! There it is, folks! Soak it up! <laughs> Her invoice is in the mail. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dia Maria sends it a super chat. Thank you, Dia. Says, Sandy, I just wanted to say you are amazing. Well, that's very nice. Oh. Um, Thank a you. And you are amazing. The fans are amazing. Oh, 100%. I, I often, you know, I often will say this true. I, I mean, every now and then you get a, somebody in the chat room who's causing, but I am a, 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 a so pleased and so amazed at the amount of cordial, polite, and just awesome fandom that the world of fandom is. I think it far outweighs any sort of negative, toxic stuff that, that, that would seep in. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, there, there is... They're, they're just amazing and so committed and passionate. You know what I mean? So uh, I totally agree. Um, AK Channel TV says, Hi, Rick and Sandy. What are your general thoughts on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the first one from 1974? Okay, for me, again, I don't do gore. <laughs> so... <laughs> and I've seen what chainsaws can do, so I haven't seen it. <laughs> there you go, I Rick. What I have seen it, um, yes. and again, I'm I'm very particular when it comes to horror movies, mm. like super particular with them. And to me, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is scary because I can envision it happening. Yes. <laughs> right? yes. I can envision. Oh, I'm, let me pick up a hitchhiker. Wait a minute. Why is he cutting himself? Wait a 100%. minute. You know. Why am I stopping at this house and you know, all of these people are, you know, right. I can remember as a kid and I probably shouldn't have been watching. I don't know why I was watching <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but the we whole, all were. <laughs> the whole like hit her again, grandpa, you know, when they're putting oh, the yeah, hammer, yeah. he's like falling forward and like yes. smacking her head with it. And then they just show her eyes and she screams and jumps through the window. Yeah. I remember being terrified. Oh yeah. By it. I mean, terrified. Oh, it's, it's one of my favorite, I mean, my favorite horror film of all time always has been Halloween, the, the, uh, first one. Uh, but one of my favorites, I guess you could say maybe it's my second, although, you know, I, th th there's a lot of 
horror movies I love. There's even films that I love that you wouldn't necessarily consider horror, but they were horror for their time. Like, you know, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, right? Sure. Or Rosemary's oh, Baby. Oh, that's my or, favorite. Oh, I love that, that one. Oh, with Betty Davis and oh Joan Crawford. Oh, my God, Crawford. I love oh, that movie. It's a good one. Oh, it's fantastic. Yes. You know, so, and again, you have to watch it for its time, right? 1960, oh, 1960, I think it was, actually. Um, and, of course, the whole idea that they were rivals in real life, I mean, that just makes the movie that much, that much more entertaining yes, to watch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of my favorites of all time is a Canadian movie shot here in Toronto called Black Christmas, of course. Oh, sure. And, uh, Black. Yeah, yeah, ju uh, just a, 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 I mean, that 1974, that you can believe that actually happening, you know, and it's it's just so frightening and so terrifying. And uh, when it was released in the U.S. in 1974, it was released under the title uh, under the title Silent Night, Evil Night, because Warner Brothers didn't want people to think that it was a black exploitation film in 1974. Uh, but you can now, of course, that's out of, you know, that's not there anymore. And you can certainly buy it in the, you know, in the States under its original title. Of course they did, you know, the remake, uh, a few months back, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. The theater, the mind, less is more. I want you to scare me in my mind before you show me anything yeah. on screen. I, you know, I can remember staying late up at night. I don't remember what channel, what, what, what channel was on at the time, but I remember waking up about five minutes into Last House on the Left, and just being West mortified, Cravens. being mortified when I was when I was done watching, oh, and just that's... like triple checking every lock in my house to make sure that everything oh, was locked up and, that's a, and nobody could get it. That's a movie you don't want to wake up in the middle of. No. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> That's brutal. Uh, super chat from, oh, look who it is. It's Chris Baber. Chris Baber sends in a super chat. Ooh. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate that, man. Says, this is an amazing show, if not your best show to date. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, thanks to all uh, Thanks to all of you, especially Rick, for bringing back this treasure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, you know, Rick, you, you, you did what you had to do. You went hard into the paint as, as the, as the kids say today. <laughs> and, and, uh, I think so. I think, I think that's what they say. Uh, at least I've been saying it, but maybe it's outdated now. I don't know. Um, uh, and you, you were able to find her and, and, uh, I agree with Chris and, and, uh, I, I won't say anything, but there's a Chris Sandy connection I'll, I'll just say that. I'll just say that. Yeah. I'll leave that down. Thanks, Chris. I love you. <laughs> well, also, also, you know, really thank the fans, right? Because I, I again, I go to For all sure. of these different events, right? I go to yeah. horror conventions and comic cons, and I mean, there's specialized events. There's a company called Creation that puts on. Um, I mean, I don't know, you know, too much about me, but I rep like almost all of the Stranger Things kids. So right. I go to all of these shows with them, and almost by far the horror fans are the most passionate about yeah. the films that they love. Right. And hundred percent. This movie, you know, made so long ago, they kept Halloween alive. If yes. you will. Right. Yep. There would be no reason to make more movies and Rob Zombie wouldn't have, you know, attempted to reinvigorate the franchise and all this other stuff, unless there was a draw to that, to the Michael Myers character, or, you know, to the storyline. So, right. so if it wasn't for the fans trying to, you know, keeping the story alive and keeping the conventions busy with those actors, I, I may have just decided, you know, said, mm, who cares about going to find Sandy Johnson because the fans don't like the movie anymore anyway, or they've forgotten about it. Or it's, it's really, moved, right. You know, or it's the fans moved out of the pop motivated. culture. I, I try to talk yeah. to a lot of the fans at conventions and I ask them, who would you like to see? Who would right. be somebody that you would just love to see? And, and believe it or not, it's not the... I mean, listen, everyone would love to meet Kurt Russell. I would too, but you know what I mean? That, so that, would my sister. Yeah, Kurt Russell would be. That's like a bucket list kind of guy. Kurt I nearly Russell. did, actually. I was uh, w When I was in L.A. for the Voice Arts Awards in 2015, which were happening over at Warner Brothers, my girlfriend and I were staying at the Roosevelt, and we were walking down the steps, uh, getting ready to go out to the, the car that was going to take us over to the, uh, to the show, and um, I heard this voice behind me. 
And I could, I, it sounded so familiar. And as we got to the bottom, he walked by me, it was Kurt Russell. Now, he wouldn't have been staying at the hotel because I'm sure he has a place in L.A., but he was dressed to the nines in some sort. I don't know where he was going. He wasn't going to the Voice Arts Awards because I didn't see him there. But I'm there, and my first thought was, holy shit, it's Kurt Russell. And then I yeah. thought, oh, my God, if only my sister were here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kurt Russell, I mean, to me, you know, my favorite horror movie of all time is The Thing. Oh, I mean, amazing. It, it, it's the most one of the most frightening things as a young adult, as an adult, as, as, as an old man I'll be someday. That I'll that I'll see it. The thing for me takes the cake. So, it's great. so Kurt Russell, but but they, the fans always ask for you know like these these niche actors you know that were that were in you know a film thirty years ago that they loved so much growing up. I, I, I don't want to take a lot of Sandy's time, but I, I like to say this about about films previously to films now, right? There's no like eight year old kid that's going to become a 28 year old adult one day that's going to pull his son aside and say hey son let me show you a movie called iron man it changed my life when i was a kid that's right. not happening right right but people often wonder why someone like martin cove and william zapka i rep the guys from the karate kid why there's little kids that come to see them at shows and why there's a ton of little kids that come and see Sandy at shows like, you know, teenagers and, and, and all, and, and why does that happen? Do they just stumble upon these movies? No, their parents show them to them. They say, right. Watch one of the best horror movies ever made. Watch one of the greatest pop culture movies, the karate kid ever made. It still ranks. I mean, ESPN just did a thing where it was a number one sports movie ever made. Right. That's because we were nostalgia. Right. Right. So they keep bringing this stuff back. So you got to give it to I mean, I just did. I just did what the fans wanted. Was, of course, was, was Finder. So so that that's who gets the real credit is the fans that want to see. It. Yeah. And, and the fan and and you're right when you say that 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 the community, the passion keeps it in the pop culture no doubt. and keeps it relevant. And no and um, because uh, it, it it is a commu- the the horror genre the horror fans i mean you know there look there's some horror i don't like either but generally speaking as a community it, it's it's um and it doesn't mean that there aren't you know weirdos and pinheads and people you'd rather not talk to like there is in every family but 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 certainly it is a <laughs> it is a it is a family right it's a family and 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 by and large it's full of you you have that communal sort of shared experience no of the love of being scared because yeah. being scared you know, it, it's why horror translate has more of a universal translation than something like comedy, you know, for example, because comedy is very specific. It, it, you know, there's different types of comedy, what you might find funny, I may not, and vice versa. But when you get in the world of horror, we're all generally, when you, when you really dive deep, I mean, I might not prefer horror, or sorry, uh, you know, gore, and I might prefer this, and you might prefer that. But at the end of the day, we're all essentially afraid of the same things. And, and I think that's, that's that communal sort of, um, connection that we share in the, in this, in this world of horror. So no, you're ba- and, and the fans, like you said, they keep that alive and then it makes no your doubt. job easier, you know? No doubt. Yeah. So I, I could not agree more. Uh, Dusty Rose, uh, let's see if we can get through these super chats here. Dusty Rose says, thank you so much, Rick and Sandy for doing this thoughts on H 18 and the Lori Strode character. Is this, I guess for you both thoughts on Halloween, 2018 and the Lori Strode character. Um, I really liked 2018 and, um, I, some of my favorite things were where the reporters bring out Michael's mask and hold it up and all the energy between all the people in chains and that whole thing just creeped me out big time, but I thought it was fabulous. (laughs) <laughs> and where he goes, when Michael goes into the trunk and pulls out the mask and puts it on, mm. those were just such powerful scenes to me. And I really loved the house. I thought that Lori's house with all the locking doors and the pull up door to the basement and all that, I thought the house was fascinating. Very cool. Those were my favorite things. Um, and of course, Lori had a great role. I mean, nice, strong role and she was waiting for him and uh she had some very good scenes with the granddaughter and stuff so yeah i i liked it a lot cool rick what about you i haven't seen it 
Oh, 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 oh. I have not seen it. I didn't believe that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Haven't seen the new one, no. Oh, it's because he's too busy. He, he's too busy making it happen, folks. Yeah. You see, Listen, my too... favorite Halloween was three. Oh, I, I there love you go. Season of the Witch. Yeah, I love the. I lo- I, I thought that was great. Always loved Tom Atkins. I thought <laughs> Season of the Witch was a, like it was like a cool movie. So I I, I haven't seen it. Season of the Witch for me. I I wish they would redo. Not connected to the Halloween. Yeah. universe i wish they would redo that movie because i think there's a lot of untapped potential there i think they were playing in a sand but like their 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 concepts and ideas i think may have been too big for the sandbox they were yeah. playing in i would love to see a remake of that today with maybe a bit more money tossed in because it, yeah. it, it it certainly is a a, a a fan favorite that's for sure it's a it's a cult it's a cult one um Pride is is it Pride Sayan Sayan S A I Y A N. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Thank you very much. It says Sandy, did you ever uh, see Michael Myers as an adult in his costume in the mask while on set during the production? Were you involved the whole time or just for the first scene? Dave and Rick, thanks to my heroes. Well, you're very welcome, Pride. Sandy. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't believe I ever did see the mask or the adult Michael with the mask on. Um, so no, I think the first time, and I didn't, I was not there for the other uh, shoots. I was brought in, like I said, for that last scene. And so really the first time I saw the movie and, and was experienced the whole script was when we all got together to watch it on the big screen. Interesting. So you were experiencing everything outside of what you shot for the first time. Right. Ah, that's that's very cool. So you you, you so you really had no idea from how it was all going to unfold. That's really great. No. Nope. That's really cool. Uh, Darren Sands, who's one of my great moderators here. Uh, Darren Sands says, thanks for the stream. Love it. Uh, when you left L.A. and moved back to Texas, were any of your friends or neighbors aware you were Judith Myers? My one sister was. But other than that, no. No one knew. And most people still don't know. <laughs> Probably true. It's probably true. Uh, David Petway <laughs> says, uh, Sandy, what's your favorite scene from Halloween that is not your own? Uh, Rick, who's your favorite Big Brother contestant and what's your favorite season? <laughs> Sandy, we'll start um, with you. I think one of the scariest scenes in Halloween is when Annie is in the laundry room. Mm. that being in an outbuilding by yourself in the dark, um, having lived a lot of my life in rural areas, I could really relate to that scene. Very scary. And of course, I love the one, you know, where Bob gets stabbed. Everybody likes that one. Yes. But I thought that the laundry room was very scary. Definitely one of my favorites for sure. I think I think my my if I had to pick my number one, it would be when uh, Michael Myers sits up behind Lori and does the head turn over at her just at the very last moment. Because I always say that that what made that work so well for me was that uh, the creative decision not to pull focus. So the focus was left on Lori. It's not like they pulled focus from Lori to Nick in the back. Like so, I, it, it was sort of like he was still blur. It's a soft focus and I think that was a, a the right move to make so there was still that kind of like what is back there what is that oh my god you know it's so it's so great it's so great uh and Rick uh yeah your, your favorite big brother contestant in your favorite season I don't remember the seasons but I'm gonna go with evil Dr. Will if that makes sense <laughs> whatever the seasons were I don't know like three and seven or something I don't know <laughs> it makes no sense to me I don't yeah. usually watch the show but hopefully it makes sense to David Petway uh it. hopefully Dr. it does there you go. Mystery Mojo Film says, Sandy, you uh, should have hit Myers with your hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should have done. She didn't have time. Uh, was well, I wouldn't have shot. wanted to hurt Deborah. Oh, that's true. That's true. That is true. Uh, so it was so it was. De- well, of course. Yeah, I guess it was her that was there with the with the uh, with the knife. Fascinating. That's right. 
Uh, Chastity Smith uh, sends a super chat. Thank you, Chastity. He says, Sandy, knowing now, knowing your impact with the Halloween franchise, what is your most memorable experience filming in Halloween? So I guess, um, well, like you, yeah, I guess what would be the most memorable thing you remember from your experience filming Halloween? Was it the people? Was it the environment? Was it the, the unknown? Was it just great, I'm working, <laughs> you know? It was, it was probably being in the dressing room between takes. And I, of course, was covered with blood. And whoever was wiping it off of me was kind of rough. Mm. And uh, Jamie Lee actually came in and said, maybe I can help with that. So she actually came in and helped get the blood off of me in a much kinder gentler fashion so i remember that very well interesting uh, so that, as far as memorable goes that's probably it right interesting interesting i wonder if i wonder if she remembers that somebody tweet her and ask her if she remembers that uh <laughs> <laughs> my guess she probably doesn't she she might she might you never know she's pretty savvy you but no problem you never know um let me see here uh tab of the short just says hi dave and sandy and rick uh, hi, Tabitha. Um, let's see here. Toronto Freddy says, Sandy, do you like A Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, gosh. There's another one I haven't seen. You have to remember that I was um, living rural uh, and all many, many times being alone at school late at night, preparing lessons, being the only one left in the building, Scary movies was probably not a good choice for me. Right. Um, since I've come back to Halloween, I have started to watch some. I did finally watch Friday the 13th, and I've now seen all the Halloweens except for the Rob Zombie ones. Mm. So, and I have a list that's been provided to me of ones that aren't overly gory. So, yes, I'm working my way through them, but I <laughs> so have not seen Elm. I haven't heard if that's a good one for me to watch yet or not. Well, uh, you're not a big fan of gore, so um, uh, God, you know, whenever I say that, I I instantly think, I, you know, I want to make the joke about the former vice president, but for some reason, I I, I don't know why, it's, you know, I want to say like, well, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm not a fan of him either, you know. Anyway, it's a it's a lame joke. Um, I would say, I would say that uh, Elm Street. I mean, there is more gore and blood in A Nightmare on Elm Street, but uh, I think the the first Elm Street is the scariest, I think, um, in terms of, you know, from a horror sort of movie perspective. Um, but yeah, you're not a fan of gore and there, there's, there's, there's a little bit of blood in that movie, but, um, yeah, it has to be a really good story if I'm going to accept right. the gore. It might, might be worth checking out. You know, it might Elm be worth Street checking out. Elm Street is a good story though. It's saying. a good story. Elm Street it is, is a good story. Like that first one. You know, it's got its blood in it, but Elm Street's, yeah, Elm it's Street's a, a good story. It is, it is, especially that first one, that yeah. first one. Yeah, All right. I could not agree well, more. Well, I'll add that to my list. Okay, sounds good. Uh, all right, we'll go for just a couple more minutes here. Uh, Matthew, is it Ferresi? Ferresi? Probably butchering that. Anyway, Matthew, you know who you are. Uh, everyone is asking better questions than I can think of. So just wanted to thank you all and thank Dave for this episode. Well, thank you so much, Matthew. Really appreciate you saying that, buddy. Uh, let me see here. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Edwin A. Sordo says, hey, Sandy and Rick, what are some of your favorite movies in general? My, one of my favorite movies is called The Greatest Gift. Hmm. Have you ever seen it? It's uh, no. It's a very good story. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite. When people come to visit, it's something that if they haven't seen it, I always show it to them. I also okay. love Dragonfly with Cosner. It's one of my uh, favorites. I saw that in the theater when it came out. Yeah, with Kathy Bates, too. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's a good yeah. movie. I love it. Yeah, it's a very spiritual movie. I can see why you like that movie. It's a very, it's got that, that, you know, that instinctual spirituality around. I, you know, I, I get it. I get it. It was a good, I, I remember seeing that. That, that was a good movie. Yeah, that was good. What about you, Rick? Uh, Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger is my favorite movie. Come on, do it, come on. Yes, do it, come on. <laughs> That's uh, what everybody does when they do an Arnold impression. Yeah. Nobody, so, yeah, yeah, there's. 
There you go, folks. There you go. I, I rep everybody from that movie pretty much. Sandal Bergman and Jerry and Sven Olsen. That's amazing. Uh, and then that's I don't awesome. know if you can see over my shoulder here, but that's a Raging Bull. Oh, yes. Poster. So Raging yep. Bull is just, it's to me, incredible. just cinemagraphically perfect. Right. Uh, it's, it's an amazing it's, it's, film. In, in every way, that movie is like a, literally to me like the perfect film. So, yeah. so probably Conan from Entertainment. But if you're gonna watch, to me, if you're gonna watch something that's perfect, maybe this or It's a Wonderful Life. To me, that's perfect. Mm, yeah, that's a it's a classic. You you can't go wrong with It's a Wonderful Life. A little bit of a feel good one there. Yeah, I mean, it's know. a perfect it's, movie. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. Can, yeah. You can't you cannot improve upon It's a Wonderful Life. No, I hear you. Uh, Dusty Rose uh, follows up with a super chat. Says, Sandy, did you know Friday the Thirteenth pulled inspiration from Halloween, uh, from the original Halloween from nineteen seventy eight? Most all horror movies, I think, did after that. But uh, were you aware? Well, probably not. But were you aware of the impact that Halloween had on future slasher films? I, I didn't until recently. I'm like I said, I'm just learning now. And of course, a lot of the fans are educating me. Yes, of course. Of course. No, that's, that's usually how it goes. Uh, Southpaw82 says, thanks for an amazing show. Hi, Sandy and Rick and Dave. Hello. Um, okay, I want to make sure. Okay, let's uh, let's 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 wrap it up there because I think this is a good a good time to do so. We're approaching an hour and forty five minutes. I think that's good. And and uh, I just want to uh, thank everybody who sent in super chats, of course, and questions. If we didn't get to your questions, like I always say on this channel, remember it's not personal. There's a lot of people watching, and things are going by, and there's only a select amount of time that we have. But um, listen, guys, I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, to finally get the story, of course, of how Rick, came, of how you found Sandy, I think was just was just amazing. And Sandy, you are you're just so lovely and 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 just a a pleasure to to talk to. So are 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 there any last things you you guys want to say and and promote or or any last things you want to mention? Um, well, I just like to thank you, of course. It's been awesome talking with you, getting to know you, and hopefully one day I'll do the con in Toronto or someplace and get to meet you again. I'd be great. Yes, for sure. Yeah, the big one here in Toronto is Fan Expo, and that usually happens at the end of August. Although, I, I don't know if it's been canceled. I mean, I think by now it would be, I haven't heard anything yet, so I'm not really sure how oh, they're yeah, going to handle that. Canceled. I would imagine but it would also, be. I, I just want to... I want to thank the fans for everything they've done for me and for all the love they give me. And I just, I can't even tell them how much I love them and look forward to chatting with them and seeing them every day and seeing them at events. It's just been life changing and I love them all. Oh, and, and they love you. There's no doubt about it. I can tell by the, by the, the warmth and the, and the reception that, you know, you've gotten here in the chat room as well. You know, it's, 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 it's reciprocal. That's, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. And, and Rick. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, just everybody go, go to my Facebook page, like my page, iconic Inc management. Uh, that way you can keep track of where, you know, everybody is appearing, where Sandy's appearing at shows. I always share appearances as they're announced. You know, I rep about 125 different actors and actresses from throughout the years. Um, and, and the convention world will be back. You know what I mean? We'll, you know, the, the world will bounce back from this pandemic as long as we're, you know, kind of do what we're supposed to do to, to try and curb some of it. Um, exactly. and, and the convention world will be back and, and everybody's passion will be back and it'll be, it'll be back bigger than, bigger than before. So, I, uh, and I and could not agree more. I can't, I can't wait because I'm going stir crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm used to traveling every weekend. I'm gone every weekend. Oh, and now, now you're just at home, and and how does your wife handle it? Is she like, God, get out of here, Rick? No, I think she might legit hate me. <laughs> you know, I have three kids, three young kids, you know, at home. Uh, but no, she, my wife, is a sport during all this. I and bet. Really has supported, you know, my oh. career over the years. And you know, and again, if it wasn't for her, if it wasn't for dinner being ready, and and her coming it's... in and saying. Her first name probably ain't Sandy. Who knows yeah. where we'd be? Who knows where we'd be? And you know what? To emphasize that point, you you know what? To have a spouse or a partner, because uh, I have one as well, that is so supportive. She She's not involved in uh, in the entertainment industry, but but she uh, definitely supports what I do in my 
career and this channel and things like that. And, and you know, and it, it sounds like Sandy's husband is the same way. And Sandy's your got wife one is too, the same. Dan is a great guy. Love yeah. Dan. And, and I can't stress how important that is to, or how, how much of a relief it is to have a partner that, that supports you in what you do. Yeah, no you doubt. know, it's, it's so, it's so important. Uh, anyways, folks. Yeah. That is going to do it for us here on episode 70 of McRae live. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I will be back tonight, believe it or not, tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time for episode, what am I, 74 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit, the podcast I do with Tony. I'll be back tonight. We're watching Friday the 13th, the remake of Friday the 13th from 2009. Uh, so make sure you tune into that tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back. I'm going to take a break now and sleep. but. <laughs> <laughs> but I and and get all energized up for the show tonight. But I will be back. And uh, again, thanks to Rick. Thanks to Sandy. And uh, in the meantime, and in between time, I will talk to you guys soon. All righty. Cheers.